Hi friends, welcome to Wild Things Week 3. Let's get started. First, we're going to be reading a book about the weaving process called Weaving the Rainbow by George L. Lyon. Then, we'll be making little weaving art projects of our own. Weaving the Rainbow by George L. Lyon. Standing at her fence, the weaver sees rainbow sheep grazing in her pasture. It is spring now. It is shearing time. When they were born a year ago in the dark barn on cold March nights, when the weaver watched their mothers lick them clean for the first time, their coats were white. And they were white when she turned them out into April fields. And in July, when she washed and combed them and loaded them into the trailer for their trip to the state fair, they were white and bright, and they won first prize. But they were getting closer to the rainbow. Fall brought their first shearing, then, as the days turned cold, their winter wool grew in. It kept them warm right through the snow. Now that it's spring again, their coats are too hot. So the weaver pins each yearling between her legs and clips the rich wool close. It comes off in one piece, sheep shape. white and springy this fleece, but carrying it from the pasture, the weaver sees rainbows. She combs the wool free of sticks and burrs, washes out dirt and stains, cards it till the strands all go the same way, and spins it pulling and twisting a skein from the fluff till it's long and strong enough to weave. When spinning is done, the weaver draws a plan. Then she makes her dyes from plants she gathered, indigo, goldenrod, madder. She's cooking up a rainbow. In big pots, she soaks the wool like dying Easter eggs. When she gets the color she wants, she hangs the yarn to dry. She won't be making cloth to wear. She'll be weaving a picture, doing with wool what a painter does with paint. Next, the weaver warps her loom. She ties her different colored yarn to the back beam, then pulls it strand by strand to the front. There, she ties it again, making the warp. When it's time to weave deep blue, she'll wind that color on the shuttle, the way a painter dips her paintbrush in the paint. 
then she'll guide the shuttle over and under the warp to make the weft. Finally, she begins, feet on the treadles, hands on the shuttle, back and forth, back and forth, from the wool of her white sheep, she weaves Kentucky pastures, grass green, evergreen, willow yellow, red bud, purple shadow, shy sky blue. From wool looped across her hand, she weaves in lambs and their mamas. White sheep in rainbow pastures, in rainbow pastures she weaves white sheep. For our craft today, you'll need scissors, some twine or yarn, some cardboard, and a hole punch. If you picked up your box from Jonesboro or Gray, your cardboard already has holes punched in it, so you don't have to worry about that. You'll also need materials that you find outside. Take your time, there's no need to rush. When you go outside after you make your craft, please respect the green spaces around you and only take off the ground. Don't cut from live plants or trees. Also, if you don't know what a plant is, don't touch it. Ask a parent or a guardian to help you identify it and make sure that it's safe. Let's go. So you wanna take your twine, your cardboard with your holes punched in it, all of your nature things, and your scissors. And I just cut the twine into six strips that were long enough to go between each of the holes on the piece of cardboard. Now you don't have to gather your nature materials before you do this. You can totally do this and then take it outside with you. It's either way. Now I just tie the strings in between the two holes lengthwise on your cardboard and you want to tie it very tight. So it actually took me a couple tries to make sure that it was tied tight enough. But you want it about as tight as a guitar string, like it doesn't really want to be pulled when you pull it. And the other side. Just pull it real tight. And make sure that it stays tight while you're trying to tie it and if you can't tie a knot that's okay just ask a parent or a guardian to help you now this activity you can do it one or two ways uh, you can make a collage which is what I'm going to show you here or you can use it if you have a lot of flowers in your green space you can use it to dry your flowers you just need to place it um, once you're done weaving them you just need to place it in a warm or a dry place. Now I just did that uh, six times and now you can take your nature materials and weave them in between the strings so they stay. And like I said you can totally take the empty loom outside and find your materials outside uh, after you've made your little loom. That's okay. I just had my materials already so I went ahead and showed you what the weaving looks like. Now, this is the other way that you can do it. You can make a collage or an art piece. And you can hang that art piece up in your house. Uh, you can display it somewhere. Totally up to you. 
It's also good for that concept of what fits and what doesn't and how do you make things fit. So you have to kind of play around with it like a puzzle for a little bit just to make things fit where you'd like them to. And some things you have to break apart to make fit. Some things aren't just gonna fit right off the bat. And there you go, you have a nature collage. Have fun with it, enjoy. So don't forget, you can earn badges in Beanstack for participating in Wild Things. Just go to the Wild Things Challenge and enter this week's secret code, WEAVE. Each week we'll have a new secret code and a new bonus challenge. Each badge is a different green space, see if you can collect them all. I'm so excited that you decided to join us and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye!